last episode. Anyway, in verse 3 of number 16, they went to Moses and Aaron and said, We have had enough of your presumption, your arrogant arrogance. We've had enough of you trying to be the bomb, trying to tell us what to do. You are no better than anyone else. Everyone in Israel has been chosen of the Lord, and he is with all of us. Because of preaching, I ended up in prison. I shared this testimony many times also. And when the Lord allowed the enemy to put me in there, I said, Lord, why? I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm following you. Why am I in here? I ain't doing nothing wrong. You said to minister. The court said don't minister. But you said to minister. I got to follow you. Why am I in here? And God said simply, you know me. Now let me show you your enemy. And that he has power. So now God started teaching me that all these graves in the graveyard, he was not responsible for none of that. Because when he made male and female, it wasn't his will or desire for us to ever leave, to die, for our soul to separate from our body. Yet it happened because of rebellion and disobedience. He said, I'm not responsible for none of that. He showed me the hospitals. He said, I'm not responsible for none of those sicknesses. Though I am sovereign and everything has to obey me when I speak, I am not responsible for those sicknesses in the hospital. I'm not responsible for the sicknesses that are taking people's lives. So when they walked up to Moses and Aaron and said, we have had enough of your presumption. You are no better than anyone else. That, that's the point. All that the Lord let me just share concerning part of my testimony. When the Lord lead me to fellowship with people that are not where I'm at. When God start using me where he has me, then I, I've heard that too. Who do you think you are? I got this kind of ministry and that kind of ministry too. I got a nonprofit. I got, and see, that, here, here's where the ignorance come in. You this got, is the handbook. This is the sword of the spirit. And this is what you chop the devil up with. He knew it. That's why in Matthew 4, when Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost, that flesh was led by the Holy Ghost in the wilderness for the purpose of being tempted by the devil. The devil said, if you be the son of God. But in the Greek, it says, since you be the son of God. He knew who Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus in the wilderness, the devil said, uh-oh. I'm not going to be able to just challenge him and ask him, what does the word say? Because this is the word. I got to come different with him. See, when you're at a different level in ministry, the enemy has to even bother you in a different way. If you compromise, he ain't got to do nothing but throw stuff from the world at you. Women who are involved with men. Women in ministry, mind you. Prophetesses or evangelists or women that are teachers of the gospel. Who get involved with men that are not men of God. They're not saved. I saw that even on social media. There was a bunch of women. With all kind of God this and God that and God this on their Facebook page. And yet they had a picture of a man all muscular with a whole bunch of dress. And they talking about, mm, can I borrow him? One lady who posted it said, oh, that's why I left him out there because he's been borrowed by others. And, so, and, and I, wrote, I couldn't go by that. I wrote and said, what in the world is wrong with y'all? Let's join the apostle with some more of the teaching. Another word of God through Jesus Christ, street 
and outreach ministry. Raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Verse 8, then Moses spoke again to Korah, does it seem a small thing to you, that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the people of Israel to be near to himself as you work in the tabernacle of Jehovah, and to stand before the people to minister to them? Is this a small thing? No. No. This is great responsibility. It's a great honor and it's a blessing that the Lord should have me in position to teach his word. Not only teach it, but to be able to read it and understand it. The hardest book in the world. And be able to relay in simple terms what this hard book is saying. Or when people call the ministry for prayer. 475-300-3850-24 hours. They call the ministry for prayer. And the Lord can use me to pray for them effectively. And then to hear them get back to me and say, praise God because the prayer worked. That's an honor. Is that a small thing? No. And, and not only is it not a small thing, but it requires commitment. Not only does it require commitment, but it requires an anointing, the anointing from the anointed one. See, when you're walking with him, you're not worried about what other people say. There's a lot of people tell their, the people in their ministry, don't listen to that minister. They know who Apostle Coleman is. Don't listen to that minister. Uh, one, one of my cousins who's a, who's a man said him as pastor. I call him a hireling. He said to me one day, because <laughs> I said, hey, cuz, why are you treating me like a step cousin? You can't let God use me to minister here. There was a word in my spirit. Because he's pastoring an old ministry. And in order to, to successfully seem like he's effective, the old people got to go because he can't pastor them. He can't. I don't even think he's ever smoked a cigarette in his life. So he can't pastor the old people. But he got young people. And you know, the young people, they're, they're not taught how to come to God. So they come in any old way. And they didn't got rid of the choir and got the praise and worship team. And then the people that are doing mimes that got the makeup and the, that's, that's demoniacal. That's, that's what that is. Pop locking and, and, and all of this stuff. That's just a way for the enemy to creep in to the, the ministry, the place of worship and have a place in there. Y'all need to get that out of there. But no, you don't, you don't want to listen. And you wonder why the Lord allowed that demon of COVID-19 to, to be the cause of the places of worship to shut down. No, he didn't tell the governors and mayors to tell them to shut down. But he allowed, he took his hand. Uh, listen, 
I hear you, Lord. God said that he has been trying to give you a chance, chance after chance after chance after chance, and you won't listen. So what he's done, again, he then took his hand off the ministry. He took his hand off the work and allowed the devil and his demons to just attack it. Why? Because he didn't have no place there. Some people got to die. Some people got to die. Go ahead and say, oh, he's wrong for saying that. Well, that's what happened here. That, that happened right here in number 16. Not only that, but all of those that wandered in the wilderness is rounded off to 40 years, but it was really 38 that they wandered. And the older people did not make it into the promised land. Their children did. The only, the only two people from the older generation was Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because they were those spies. They were with them spies that went out to spot the land and came back with the faith report. They believed God. God led this ministry to say back in January. Back in November, back in December, back in October, that a lot of ministers was just going to start dying, that a lot of places of worship were going to close. Look back on the old shows. He sent the word, not just through this ministry, but through other ministries that he's raised up to. He sent the word. But you wasn't listening. And people that are on Facebook, they get their 15 minutes of fame. I heard you, Lord. The Lord told me this earlier. He said, people on Facebook that get up there and try to minister, that are not called, that don't have a work for God to do, but they, they're utilizing Facebook Live. They get up there and they'll sit there and say, I'm waiting for people to come on in. Come on in, y'all. Come on. That's because they need the 250 so to speak. They need somebody sitting there typing amen or hey pastor or hey this or hey, they need that. But they have no power. None. Some of them get up there and they got to do their hair while they talk. Yes, I I blah blah blah. Vain. But it's alright. It's alright. It's alright. I know a pastor from Waterbury. He's really an evangelist. Now he's trying to go by pastor. He had like he just discovered Facebook Live. Now he know how to use it a little bit. And he's on there. Hello, uh, Facebook people all over the world. See, that's where he at. He, he, he said that he took a course in psychology. So he's one of the people who's dealing with the mind, not the spirit. The mind. The mind. The mind. And he wants to be great. There's a lot of ministers who want to be great. No one wants to be humble, but they want to be great. Moses asked him, is it a small thing? Is it nothing to you, verse 10, that he has given you this task to only you Levites? Are, and now are you demanding a priesthood also? Some people start out claiming God called them the pastor. Next thing you know, they then jumped up and became apostles. Some fool then or, or, or installed them and got them wearing all these hot garbs. And, and, and they standing there with the hat and the big cane and, and all of this and giving them the cross saying, this means you're a priest. They didn't jump from the frying pan into the fire. And don't got no more power afterward than they had before. COVID-19 is still taking people out. <laughs> so what are you doing? Even the older people back in the day, in the days of my great grandparents and great grandparents, they might not have been able to read like we can, but they sure have power because they believe. The generations are getting worse. Men walking around, males, I'll say, walking around with their pants down, butt showing, drawers showing. 
That's so disgusting and tacky. And they could read over and over and over again how that started, what it means, what it's symbolic of. They don't care. Women all of a sudden want to be lesbians. They tired of men. And then some lesbian comes and creep up in the ministry and try to act like she knows God, love God, serve God, and all the while she's plotting on you. And then you get a chance to be alone with her. Y'all go shopping or do some girlish things. And next thing you know, she put the move on you. A lot of them give in. Yeah. A lot of those, because they didn't earn your trust. See, you don't know how the devil operates. The devil want your trust. Once he gets your trust, he got you. And so then you try that lesbianism stuff. It don't work. You get tired of it because you realize the demoniacal ties that come with it and the bondage that it brings and how it messes up your life, messes up your children, all of that kind of stuff. And then you be by yourself and now you got trust issues. Next thing you know, God, after you line up, after you line up, some, a man like me that's in the season of waiting for his wife, look at you and go, wow, I see the good in her. Because that's what God allowed any man of God to see at first in his daughters, the good. After a while, he, he allowed you to see the bad and the ugly, but first he let you see the good and you go, wow, look at that anointing on her. God will say, yep, I sure did anoint her. But now he'll give you his glasses and say, but look how she choose to be. And then you look and you see poison, problems. The enemy is out to attack the place of worship. Moses asked, and now are you demanding a priesthood also? Again, they start out in one office, intrusion usually, and then they want to intrude in another. Now all of a sudden here in New Haven, there's a lot of people popping up claiming that they're apostles when they are not. Again, an apostle is a teacher. So a true apostle, if he don't see it in here, he's not going to go by it. If he sees in here, the Bible said, women, all women, every woman, praying or prophesying with her head uncovered dishonors her head. A true apostle knows that her head ultimately is God. The order is God, the Godhead, angels, man, woman, child. So it says all women, every woman. So if she's not married and she's single, then her head is God, right? So if God put a husband there, her head is still God. Why? Because God is his head. But she's to submit to him as unto the Lord. A true apostle teaches that. Because it's in the scriptures. But those are compromising ones. They just want the title, not the vocation. See, I'm, my title is not apostle. My calling is apostle. But a lot of them, it's a title. Because they bought it, stole it, somebody gave it to them. Somebody tricked them into it or somebody deceived them into it. Either way, the devil is the one that's responsible for them being who they claim that they are, and they try to say God called them in that office. But yet the power to execute the work of that office is not there. It's not there. Same thing with women who call themselves pastors. The calling or the gifts, the spiritual gifts, to execute the office of the pastor, they don't have it. It's not there. It's not there. A pastor knows everything in the ministry because they are the overseer. They have the gift of administration, as it says in 1 Corinthians 12. So if a pastor, well, I don't know if we got that. You got to ask so-and-so. You are hireling. You ain't no pastor. Go sit down somewhere. Bums in the ministry. Yeah, I said it. 
Because it's true. Jesus got tired too. There's times Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. How long must I deal with you? How long? <laughs> because they wasn't getting it. And Moses even asked him, is this a small thing? You're, the office you're in, God did choose you for that. Now, this is what he said to him, to them, to Korah and them. He did choose y'all as Levites. And, 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 and you don't see the value in that? You want the priesthood too? You want control? That is why you are revolting against Jehovah. And what has Aaron done? What has the pastor done? <laughs> that you are dissatisfied with him. What, what did he do? Yeah, we know Aaron was weak. Most pastors have a father's heart. They're passive. You know. But, but the prophet was used by God to show compassion and pity on the pastor, poor pastor. What has he done? He don't know better. <laughs> Why you, you ain't got beat on him like that. If you're going to go against somebody, go against me. This is what the prophets say, because prophets are tough. See, whatever God used a prophet to speak, it's going to happen. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's going to happen. Is it a small thing, verse 13, they mimicked, that you brought us out of lovely Egypt to kill us here in this terrible wilderness, and that now you want to make yourself our king? What's more, you haven't brought us into the wonderful country you promised, nor given us fields and vineyards. Whom are you trying to fool? We refuse to come. So now they're talking to the prophet and going to mock him. But they really wasn't mocking him. They was mocking God because what the prophet was saying, God was telling him to say. Now they're going to say, huh, is it a small thing that you brought us out of lovely Egypt? There's nothing good about the past. If it was, God wouldn't have brought you out. Stop thinking you could go back. I'll go back like I was. No, you won't. And do what? So today you're married or engaged or in the covenant of marriage and engaged the same thing. You're in this covenant now. God is blessing you and elevating you and adding to you. And you're going to open your mouth and say, I'll go back to where I was. Go ahead then. And you know what happens with people? Once they get there and they look around, then they go, oh my goodness, I better run back. No. See, because you can walk out the door and come back in. Walk out, come back in. Walk out, come back in. But there comes a time when you walk out the door, and that's it. It's a wrap. It's shut. It's locked. When God told no one them go in the ark, and they went, brought the animals, there was no handle on the outside of the door. Why? Because God locked it. And when he locked a door, can't nobody open it. You can wave the red flag, the white one, every other flag. It's not going to work. You can blow your blessing. And then someone else that's prepared and talking to God and crying about it can receive it. You could go to a car lot and the Lord could be telling you, get that car. And you could look at it and go, oh, that's a, a hoopty. Eh. Wow, look at that one. And you could buy that one and then go home and it don't start no more, conk out or whatever. Then you go, oh, man. I better let me go back over there and trade this in and try to get that one. Then you go back there and that car's already gone. Somebody else came and got it. They received it because you didn't. They said we refuse to come. So now they're rebelling. Rebellion will hurt you. And pride will help you be rebellious. Is, a, is it a smart thing you brought us out of lovely Egypt to kill us here in this terrible wilderness and that now you want to make yourself our king so they don't want to submit to leadership. They don't want to acknowledge the anointing on this man's life that God placed to carry them. And then they said, what's more, you haven't brought us into the wonderful country you promised. So now they're talking about stuff, prosperity. nor giving us fields and vineyards. Whom are you trying to fool? We refuse to come. Then Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, 
do not accept their sacrifices. Now, if you look in the description, those of you that's watching by Facebook, you'll see that the Lord led me to list seven points we're going to deal with, and one of them is, if I'm not mistaken, Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong, it talks about uh, how the, the weight, or I'm going to paraphrase it, how the trial of, of a person that's in leadership pushes them to God. This is one of the examples. God said, because the relationship between the chosen vessel and God is an awesome relationship. Because God is not going to send you out if you and God don't have no relationship. Why? Because if God send you out, you'll go out and won't even listen to God. There's a lot of ministers, Jake's, Bynum, Dollar, if he even know God at all. But there's Brian Karn, uh, Jamal Bryan, all even Donnie McClurkin. These people have, they might have started with God. But once they got in a position, Jackie McCullough too, Joyce Meyer too, all right? Even people before them, Catherine Cumin, Benny, and all, all of them, they might have started out with God. But once they got to a comfort level, once they got to a level of position, they don't need God no more. They don't need God to go and fill up an arena of 30,000 people. Watch this. If they was to get on Facebook right now or on TV and do a commercial, Jake's was to say, I'm going to have a nice workshop and don't worry about the coronavirus because we'll pray them away. Everybody come. That place would be full. By sheeple. <laughs> because they look at man like man has power. Listen, I'm going to blow the whistle again. When those ministries did shut the door because the governor and mayor said to, and they listened to those unsaved vessels say shut the place of worship down, and they did, after a while, know what they said? We're missing the money. That's how the virtual thing got popular, because it was another way of getting your money. And instead of you helping a ministry or sowing into a ministry, like Paul mentioned in Philippians 4, instead of you doing that to help the lost, the hurt, the destitute, the less fortunate, the homeless, instead of you teaming up with a, a work from God that's doing that, you chose and still choose to, to, to render your substance to the ministry with the minister standing like this. You ought to give even more now. Give your offerings. Give your offerings. Give your offerings. And you're giving it. But they abandoned you. You don't see that? They abandoned you. One of my unsaved cousins going to say to me, you're ministering from the comfort of your own home. Listen, I'm out there in the street. People that know me will tell you I'm out there in the street and I don't wear a mask. Like I said, I might wear gloves because of touching stuff, I, you know, the touching stuff, and I like to eat crackers or whatever. So I don't want to touch stuff barehanded and then touch food, and you ain't always around. When you're out in the field witnessing, you're not always around water. So I will wear gloves, but a mask, I ain't wearing no mask. And when I go in the store, and I told you this other night, and they say to me, you got to put a mask on, I tell them it's against my religion. It's against my belief. What do you mean? I went in Ashley's one day. I'm going to say it. I went in Ashley's in Hamden to go get me a, a, a sugar-free milkshake. Man, I had a taste for one. So I went there. <laughs> and, and for the sake of protecting a person's identity, I'm going to say there was somebody with me that gave me a ride there. And I went in there, and I stood there, and I'm watching all these people with masks on. I saw the big sign on the door. Uh, no mask, no service, something like that. So I'm standing there, and then the lady going to say to me behind the counter, uh, Sir, if you don't have a mask, you got to go outside and get one. I said, even if it's against my religion, 
She ain't say nothing. Now the person that was with me, I turned around, they was outside. I said, oh my goodness. I stayed right there. And then they came back in and said, you ain't coming outside? I said, for what? Because they said you ain't got no mask. I said, they're going to serve me. I'm, I'm on the Lord's side. I believe in God. And when I got up there to the counter, I said to the lady, I was here yesterday and I ain't had no mask on. Oh, yeah, you were. I said, yes. So can I have a sugar-free, uh, I think it was a chocolate chip milkshake? In the meantime, the other lady was in the back on the phone talking, and I, I discerned she was talking to her boss. And when she came back and hung up the phone, she was like, I, I, it's not my policy and blah, 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 blah. But I just had to, and, and apparently the boss didn't have no remedy for a person that says that. So I got served, sure did. And then they, the person that was with me, they got served. They, you know, listen. <laughs> Talk is cheap. If you're going to stand in the devil's face, you could talk all you want to. The devil know who to, who to mess with and who not to. He know. Moses asked God to not accept their sacrifices. And God said, I have never stolen so much as a donkey from them and have not hurt one of them. God, Moses was said, I didn't do nothing to them. I didn't do nothing to them, Father. Don't accept nothing from them. Now you might think, well, he was telling God what to do. Remember, the prophet and the prophetess, the seasoned one, when they're before God and being used by him, they say what he put in their spirit to say. So it was God that was telling Moses to say that. See, there has to be an agreement between heaven and the earth realm. Thank you, Lord. That's why God manifested himself in flesh and came here. Now, people and other beliefs say, well, if Jesus is God, then who is he praying to? Those of us that are learned in theology and that teach true biblical theology, that God has revealed the mystery of godliness to us, we understand that God was talking to himself. Why would he do that? How could he do that when he was on earth? What God are you talking about? Because the God that I serve is omnipresent. Not only that, he is omnipotent. He is able to be here, there, here at the same time. Ha! What a mighty God we serve. Those of us that serve him. What a mighty God we serve. Mm -hmm. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I told him, I'm not going to put on no mask. I'm not wearing no mask. If, if they're going to really pressure me about wearing a mask, I ain't going. And if they call the police, I'll tell the police, this book say, because I carry a Bible with me. I always have one, especially when I got my bag with me. This book say, so what you going to do now, tread on my religious freedom? I'll be in the store and tell them in a minute, I work for he who woke everybody up in here. Then people say you're presumptuous or you're arrogant. No, it's just that I know who I am. I am Apostle Allen E. Coleman Jr. It's who I am. It's not what I am, that's who I am. Said the Lord. So after Moses said to God or asked him, don't accept their offerings, I've never stolen so much as a donkey from them and have not hurt one of them. Again, remember how we just talked about in verse um, 4, how he fell on his face. And in verse 5, he spoke to Korah and told him what to do. Well, here's another instance. After he said this to God in verse 15 and verse 16, Apparently, he received a revelation. Now, you know, when this was written, it wasn't written and placed in verses and chapters. That didn't come until some years ago. But when the scriptures was originally written, it was a big, it, this particular numbers, it was a book. 
and no verses, no chapter. So in between, uh, what we know is chapter 15 and chapter 16, somewhere in there Moses got the revelation from God and said to Korah, come here tomorrow before the Lord with all your friends. Aaron will be here too. Be sure to bring your censers and incense on them, a censer for each man, 250 in all, and Aaron will also be there with his. Verse 18 says, so they did. They came with their censers and lit them and placed the incense on them and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. I got to give it to them. At least they accepted the challenge. Because sometimes the Lord lead me to be talking to people out in the field, even Muslims who claim that, you know, Jesus is not God manifest in the flesh. And I'll tell them in a minute, let's, let's, let's put them to the proof. Some of them, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to test Allah. No, you said he's not God. And Allah is not the God of the Bible. Allah only means supreme God. That's your God. My God's name is I am. <laughs> he, he'll accept the challenge. He sure will. Look at this. God told Moses to tell Korah, come here tomorrow before the Lord with all your friends. So that means Dathan, Abiram, An, and the 250. Bring them all. Hmm. Remember what Elijah was used by God to do on Mount Carmel? 850 false prophets. Bring them all. The mayor, the governor, all of them, if they watch this broadcast, which I hope they do, I'm going to give it to a news reporter. They watch this broadcast and get mad. He called out our names. We're going to do this. Come on. Bring it all. Bring on. I don't care. Come on because I serve a God that is going to validate me. Not just me. You prophets and prophetesses that are watching and people discouraging you, don't be discouraged because you work for and serve a God that validates you and you. Yes, you do. Come on, if you're going to believe in him, believe in him. Huh. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. If you're going to believe, you better believe. Believe on him and believe in him. Come on now. Because if you don't believe on him, how are you going to be more than a conqueror if you don't believe on him that gives you that victory? <laughs> I'm going to read verse 18 again. So they did. They came with their censers and lit them and placed the incense on them. This is so funny. And stood at the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Now this tabernacle was the one that the Lord used uh, me some seasons ago to minister from Exodus 33 when the Lord told them that he was going to send an angel before them to drive out the Canaanites from the promised land. And Moses had to pitch the tent everywhere they stopped in the wilderness and on their travel. The tent in the Hebrew also meant tabernacle. It was called the tabernacle of the congregation or the tent of the congregation. And whenever the people needed to meet with God, they would go to that tabernacle. But Moses and Aaron, or back there, Moses, in Exodus, Moses was able to go, Joshua was able to go in the tabernacle. Joshua all the while was being prepared to take over leadership as the prophet to lead Israel once in the promised land. He didn't know that, but Moses knew it because God told him. So they stood... <laughs> They stood at the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Verse 19 says, Meanwhile, Korah had stirred up the entire nation against Moses and Aaron, and they all assembled 
to watch. So Korah stirred up everywhere, the whole nation, there at the tabernacle, the place where God fellowshiped with Moses at, where he came amongst the people there, and his glory, his Shekinah glory cloud, filled the door as security to bar people out, except those that he allowed in the tabernacle, Moses, Aaron, or Joshua. Here they are standing at the entrance of the tabernacle, and then Korah going to stir up all of this problem these problems against Moses and Aaron. And all the people said, I can imagine. Come on, y'all, watch. Watch. Let's see what Moses is going to do. Let's see what he... I can imagine all of them standing there. The Bible says that he stirred up the entire nation against Moses and Aaron, and they all assembled to watch. Now look at what else it says. Then the glory of Jehovah appeared to all the people. God will validate you. When he tell you to tell somebody something, tell them. Because he will validate you. When he tell you to go to your family and tell them, thus said the Lord, do it. Because he will validate you. When all your enemies are coming against you and trying to hold you down when they done blackballed you and talked about you and everybody's trying to scandalize your name. The older people used to say they was buked in scorn, meaning they were rebuked in scorn. When they do all this to you and you stand in there, uh, some of you prophets and prophetesses understand this. And apostles too, evangelists too, pastors too, Teachers too. I'm talking about the ones that God called. Those of you in your right office, you understand this. Because there's times God used you to do or say something. And you went through persecution. And you didn't know what to do. You didn't know. Maybe you're not in a public ministry, but you could be a wife who's in the ministry of marriage. And your husband has persecuted you. Your children think you done went cuckoo. You could be a husband in the ministry of marriage. And your wife keep going against what God is telling you to say. Your children don't want to hear it. You done said, uh-oh, I hear you, Lord. God said back there when Moses said, do not accept their sacrifices. I have never stolen so much as a donkey from them and have not hurt one of them. He said I didn't set no bad example for them. They have no reason to treat me like this because all they've seen me do is work for you. God will validate you. It says, let me read that again, verse 19, the second part. Then the glory of Jehovah, this is a living Bible. Then the glory of Jehovah appeared to all the people. Verse 20, And Jehovah said to Moses and Aaron. Now he's saying this to the pastor because he's not going to deny the pastor's leadership because he placed him in that position. And he's also talking to the prophet because both of these anointings come from God. God is the prophet, the, the, the master prophet. He is the bishop of our souls. Ah! So he's talking to those that bear his anointing. And here's what he said. Get away from these people so that I may instantly destroy them. Now, pay attention to this right here. Because verse 22 says, but. Let's, let's give English some play. But Moses and Aaron fell face downward to the ground before the Lord. They didn't move away. Like God said, so that he can consume them. He was ready to deal with them. He says, so that I may instantly destroy them. He was ready. You don't know how many times some of y'all have come close to being dealt with by God. I'm talking about the ones that are in the wrong. The one in the wrong office. 
You don't know how close you came to being dealt with by God for intrusion. Those that said God, women that said God called them to be a pastor or an apostle or even a bishop, which is the same thing as a pastor, you lied on God. You don't know how many times God got ready to deal with you. I hear the Lord saying that. He got ready to deal with you. Some of you done lost your marriage and you don't know why. Oh, it's because he wasn't walking right. No, you had no power. You set a bad example. You done went against God. You said you was a pastor when the Bible don't say that. You did it. You said you were an apostle. And, and the Bible doesn't say that. There's no example of that. And God sent word. He's sending word now to tell you, come out of that. But you won't listen. You won't listen. If you're the head of the ministry, it don't you could you could change your license because you're the head. If you're a prophetess, if you have the gift of visions and dreams and, 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 revel, and revelation of visions and dreams, and inter interpreting visions and dreams, if you got that gift, you're a prophetess, if you're a worshiper, if you keep a journal or a spiritual diary, or if you're a psalmist, if, if you're doing all of this in ministry, you are a prophetess. Come out of that office of apostle because God didn't put you in there. And it's nothing but a title on you. You're not a teacher. Because if you were, you would know to cover your head. And you don't do that. Were we now? Women calling themselves great don't cover their head. And the wig don't count. That weave don't count either. And then you got the women who are in ministry that cut their head bald. What is wrong with you? You're not a teacher because the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 11, it's a disgrace for a woman to do that because her hair is her glory. It's not a covering, but it's her glory. <sighs> Moses and Aaron, verse 22, fell face downward to the ground before the Lord. They went immediately into worship. Into worship. And when they did that, they said, Oh God, now they're interceding. The God of all mankind, they pleaded. Must you be angry with all the people when one man sins? Now, those of us that are intercessors, those that are in their right office as prophet and prophetess and apostle. You want to get rid of that coronavirus demon? This is how you do it. We need to go before God. It would be a blessing to go collectively, but since we're all in different locations, you know, if you got friends that are strong in the Lord like you are, this is for the ones that are sitting in the right office, that really love the Lord, that serve Him with all their heart, and that got friends that do the same thing because like-minded people hang with like-minded people, drunks hang with drunks, lesbians hang with lesbians, gay men hang with gay men, compromisers hang with God compromisers, crooked ministers hang with crooked ministers, ministers that want to be great hang with ministers that want to be great, Birds of a feather flock together. But if you're one of those that really serve God and that's in the right office he called you in with biblical proof and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost confirms that and your friends are the same way, your brethren, the ones you fellowship with, it's not a clique, it's a brotherhood. Agree to a time of prayer where you specifically pray and fast against that COVID-19 demon. That demon, will we can, we can drive that demon out of the United States if the people of God, see the mayor can't do it, the governor can't do it. Again, uh, a governor, <laughs> everybody got in there, I call him Loser Lamont because he didn't run for governor before and lost. But Lamont and Elliker and what's that? The sick one, the one that looks sick. What's his name? Uh, Blumenthal. They don't know what to do. And for Lamont to even consider opening the schools and sending the kids back in schools, you putting a hit out on the children's life. Now, they said on the news yesterday, 
Well, children that are under 13 can't catch it and pass it to nobody. Stop lying. What about that sickness that was affecting young kids and babies and kids that was two and three and four, and they said it was a form of COVID-19? So now, because now, now you're telling the people and you news reporters, y'all are troublemakers because y'all are instigators. You get paid to lie and to say anything and to report news. The weatherman, you don't know nothing about what the weather going to be like if you did. God's people never had to use no barometers and, and all kind of, 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 of uh, 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 things in order to see and say stuff. No, they hear from God. You, you, you weather people will say it's going to snow, and when it don't, you don't get up there and apologize and say, I was wrong. You don't quit your job. So, uh, putting these kids back in school is wrong. It's not the time for that. And when it happens, if the numbers go up as far as COVID-19 and people get sick, Lamont is going to be the one that's blamed for it. It's going to be on his record. And he cracks me up sitting there looking like Barney Rubble trying to talk and be intelligent. Man, you don't know what you're talking about. Stop. I don't even know how you got to be governor. I, I don't know. I guess you're better than Tony Hart because she did some crooked stuff. You know the scandal that surrounded her. But all most politicians have their hand in the cookie jar in some way or another. So now they're asking for more money to do this or that with. When the stimulus check came out, some of you brothers know, those that had child support bills, you didn't even get your stimulus check because child support snatched it. But we're in this together, right? Well, you're not supposed to eat? You're not supposed to be able to buy you no clothes or pay a bill? It's crooked. Man, it's, a, it's perpetrating a fraud. That's what we called it when I was in the world. When I was a deaf MC. Some of y'all know what that is. Perpetrating a fraud. They need to stop. They need to stop. The, the minister I told you that's really an evangelist trying to play pastor who's trying to run some psychology game. That dude said the other day, there's no deaths in Connecticut. Thank God that Connecticut is doing good. He was lying because there were deaths. And even yesterday, they said four more people just died because of COVID-19. More people are still hospitalized. That demon ain't went nowhere. And you are people on Facebook and in the real world that are saying, Lord, heal our land. Heal our land. It's not going to happen till there's a change. We're going to leave on a point here in a minute. They asked God, must you be angry with all the people when one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses, verse 23, then tell the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abiram, followed closely by the 250 Israeli leaders. Quick! He told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them, lest you be included in their sins and be destroyed with them. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the entrances of their tents with their wives and sons and little ones. God already said to some of you ministers, get away from the ones you're hanging with that's not following God. Listen, if you're not gay, get away from the gay minister. If you're not a lesbian, get away from the, the minister you know that is one. If you don't play numbers, get out of cahoots with the minister that go play the numbers after service. Well, not at the building is closed. Uh, that play numbers, period. If you're not a gambler, then don't hang with the minister that gamble. If you're a minister that saves, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, following God, you're set apart for his use. You, you serve him for God, you're living for God, you die. Get away from the ones that's not that way. Because what will happen is you will be dealt with when God deal with them. You don't want that. You could be guilty by association. You don't want that. You don't want that. 
There's some of you, God is saying, get out, get away from. And he's talking in many areas. If you're in a marriage and your husband is beating you up and you black and blue and he's cheating and passing diseases to you, and he's, get out of that marriage. You better leave. If you don't stop it, it's going to keep going. If you're a husband and you got a wife and she's cheating and lying and putting her family before you and she keep abusing you and disrespecting you and usurping authority and she says, I'm not going to follow nothing, no matter how much scripture you show her, you better get out of that. Get out of it. Talk to God about it. He'll lead you. Watch. You better get out of that. Because if you don't, if you don't stop it, it's going to keep going. Those of you in the ministry where you're not learning nothing, get out of it. Get out of it. There's some ministers that only want you for your money. And there's some sheep, believe it or not, who want to be wanted for money. They have a couple of dollars or their own business. And they want to they wanna be one. It makes them feel good because nobody else wanted them. So they figure, well, I might as well be used. Stop. Stop. Get out of that. You want to share some monies? Share it with a ministry that's doing something in the name of the Lord. Not a ministry that's trying to pacify you. God said, get away. Get away. Lying ministers, get away from them. If they lie, get away from them. If you see ministers going to the strip club, if you see ministers that are tricking, messing with women, paying them to have sex with them at night, if you see, get away from them. If you know a minister in the crack house and you don't smoke crack, get away from them. Because when God deal with them, you're going to get what they get just by you being close to them. Don't touch anything that belongs to them. If they say, come and speak at this ministry, no, no thank you. If you know that they crooked, if you know that they chasing money, if you know that they out in the world and got one foot in the world, one foot in the pulpit, and they come and minister, or come to our, 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 our social event, or come to our workshop, or come support, don't go. What, you scared to say no? They ain't got no heaven to hell to put you in. And if you're called by God, they can't sit you down. They cannot take your license that you use in the earth realm. When the Lord used this ministry to ordain people, here's what it says at the end of the license, is their license is in existence as long as they live a godly life. Because that's what mine says. And no, they don't have to pay to have it renewed. What, what's the point of that? That's, that's tacky. Get away from it. Then it says, so all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan in the Bible, and Dathan in the... Now see, they was obedient. They backed up. Good thing they did. And Dathan in the Bible came out and stood at the entrances of their tents with their wives and sons and little ones. They came out with their crew, thinking that they was going to accomplish something. So now you got all these people that's against God all bunched together. <laughs> And Moses said, verse 28, by this you shall know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these things that I have done. For I have not done them on my own. If these men, now this is prophet talking. Prophets and prophetesses, once they say, let me tell you something. I'll say this. If a prophet or a prophetess, <laughs> actually if a prophet does this, and a prophetess does this, you better watch out. You better watch out. If they do this, the anointing is transferred from the palm, you better watch out. Even if they speak, thus saith the Lord, and they got the look, and if it's a woman and her head is covered, and she's doing all this, a prophetess with her head covered, you better watch out. Even if she got the prayer shawl on, or she got on a scarf. If her, the top of her cranium is covered, you better watch out. Because in the Greek text, in 1 Corinthians 11, where it says, every woman praying and prophesy with her head uncovered, and then later on it mentions must cover her head, that head covering in the Greek means veil. It covers the very top of the cranium. That shows she is under submission. She's a submissive vessel. She understands that she is under the authority of man. She understands that he's the head and she's the body. 
It don't matter. They ain't got to be married. She understands that in creation, man is the head, woman is the body. That's why there hasn't been no woman president yet. And every time it came close, the Lord let me to minister back in January that the gay guy that was married to a man that was running for president, God wasn't going to let him. And he didn't. The, the two women that was running, they wasn't going to be either. God let me to say those three people was going to drop out, and they did. They did. And no, I don't watch Brian Car I don't watch people's stuff because I don't want what they say to get tangled in my spirit. I don't do that. I, I got too much to do. This is a very large ministry, incorporated in nine states, very busy. Television, radio, doing all kinds of things. Street and outreach, that's busy right there. All this stuff God uses the ministry to do. I ain't got time to be listening to other people. So even on Facebook, when people send me people video, I don't watch that mess. I don't watch it because a lot of them are hirelings or entertainers trying to go under the guise of minister. Man, I ain't trying to hear that mess. Moses said, For I have not done these things on my own. I got to read that again because I don't want to lose the, the power of that text. By this you shall know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these things that I have done. For I have not done them on my own. Verse 29, If these men die a natural death or from some ordinary accident, or disease, then Jehovah has not sent me. <laughs> God has sent me to ministries. I've got putting out of ministries uh, for telling the truth or because a minister was intimidated by the anointing on my life. This was years ago and toward the first five years of ministry. And the other times God led me to say, if this ministry is still standing in three months, then God did not send me. And then ministry is closed. Because the Lord told me to say that and I do. It's not that, you know, you think of saying this on your own because you don't. When you're a vessel, you're a vessel. You're poured into. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 30. But if the Lord does a miracle and the ground opens up and swallows them and everything that belongs to them, and they go alive down into Sheol or hell, then you will, or the pit, then you will know that these men have despised the Lord. He had hardly finished speaking. Verse 31. The words, when the ground suddenly split open beneath them, and the great fissure, that's what I was looking up in the dictionary, fissure, it meant crack, crevice. A great fissure swallowed them up, along with their tents and families and the friends who were standing with them and everything they owned. So they went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished. All of the people of Israel flooded their screams, fearing that the earth would swallow them too. Then fire came forth from Jehovah and burned up the 250 men who were offering incense. So when they saw them go down, they thought they were getting away. But they weren't. Just because some people don't die during this COVID-19 uh, epidemic, it don't mean that you're straight. Mm -mm. Not at all. Because God could be dealing with you in other ways. Uh, there's people on the news that have uh, went, had COVID-19 and came out of it and still got uh, um, pneumonia or still headaches or can't breathe still. Or what, there's residue. Residue. See, you can't talk about the man or woman of God or interfere with God's work or be part of a ministry that's despising God and think you're not going to get hit. You better get out of there. You better get out of there. Just stop. Sometimes you just got to just stop. Well, how do I, do I give them a letter? No, just stop. If they call you, don't even answer the phone. If you ain't bad, if you ain't bold enough to tell them, look, I just stop. Verse 36, and the Lord said to Moses, tell Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, to pull those censers from the fire, for they are wholly dedicated to the Lord. He must also scatter the burning incense from the senses of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives. He shall then beat the metal into a sheet as a covering for the altar. And these senses are holy because they were used before the Lord. And the altar sheet shall be a reminder to the people of Israel. So Eliezer the priest took the 250 bronze censers and beat them out into a sheet of metal to cover the altar. To be a reminder to the people of Israel that no unauthorized person 
No one who is not a descendant of Aaron may come before the Lord to burn incense. That's the same thing to happen to him as happened to Korah and his associates. Thus, the Lord's directions to Moses were carried out. So, there's ministries, again, that close, ministers that died, and their ministries. Now, you know, there were some ministries that were doing the work of the Lord because there were people in it that had clean hands and were doing things in the name of the Lord. But maybe the head wasn't. Maybe other people in the ministry wasn't. Maybe there was other... See, whenever there's a, a sin in the camp, the Lord deals with the head about the issue, not the sheep. He will... He will, don't think the sheep get away, because as you saw here, the 250 people that also was with Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and On. Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and On. The same, the 250 that was with them, they got dealt with too. They weren't the leaders. They were just well-known people, part of the assembly, but they got dealt with. So you don't want to be in cahoots with nobody that ain't walking around. Even in ministries where there's masons and eastern stars, they should not be in there because their doctrine is totally different than the Holy Bible. Oh, you, you got to research this. And I'm talking to the leaders. You need to research that. And some of you leaders are in the masons and eastern stars. You need to get out of the ministry or just open up a, 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 a hall or a, a, a masonic temple or something. Get out of the ministry. Get Jesus' name off that building. Get the name of the ministry that would appear to glorify God off that building because that's, no, no. You're bamboozling the people, and God's going to deal with you. He's going to deal with you. He's allowing the enemy to attack these buildings to clean it out, believe it or not. This demon is going to go after a season, and it's a lot of stuff going to be cleaned out. And a lot of leaders, that's going to be dead and gone because they won't listen. When you don't listen to the vessel God sent, then God got to do like he did here and come and visit you himself. And when he do that, that's not cool. Your work will be a reminder to the people, the stuff you've done, the work you've done, or even your reputation. Now to tell people, don't do that. Because you do what they did, you're going to get what they got. Don't do it. God don't play. How we know? Because of what he did to them. Oh, all right. Then in verse 41, but the very next morning, all the people began muttering again against Moses and Aaron, saying, you have killed the Lord's people. So overnight, the devil had time to mess with these people's mind. And the next day they blamed, <laughs> that's so dumb, they blamed the man of God for those people's demise. Wouldn't you think that they would go, if he said that and it happened, they must, not, they must have forgot what the Lord let them say about, but if the Lord does a miracle and the ground opens up and swallows them and everything that belongs to them and they go down alive into show, then you will know that these men have despised the Lord. They must have forgot that. But they blame Moses. When it wasn't Moses, he couldn't open no ground. Soon, a great sullen mob formed, verse 32, 42. Suddenly, as they looked toward the tabernacle, the cloud appeared, and the awesome glory of the Lord was seen. God will validate you. I'm telling you, they don't catch it one time. They don't understand God is with you one time. He will show them again. Now, here he is appearing again. Because it was too much for Moses and Aaron to do. Because God was able to be in the camp, he made guest appearances. If the ministry that you say God put you over, if God is not there, that explains why it's closed. <laughs> and don't try to open up and say, that'll prove God is here. No, because then when people start getting sick and dying, including the leader, then what? Oh, we shouldn't have did that. We should have never listened to him. Don't listen to me. You better listen to God. Again, this ministry never did close. This one right here is always open. It's, it's been open. It's going to stay open. I'm out there in the street all the time. Minister on the bus. I get on the bus. I ain't got, I don't wear no mask. I'm telling you. Mm -mm. Because as long as I walk with God, he ain't going to let nothing happen to me. My trust is in God. I know him. I work for him. 
Remember the testimony about the cloud the Lord led me to share? I ain't seen no apostles pray and stop no rain. That's how God used me. I'm not saying I'm not I'm the only one to do that, because I, I know I'm not. I know God got other apostles in other regions doing uh, great exploits too. He got us in different regions, spread out doing great exploits. But God shows me he's with me. Even when I say to him, Lord, all this I'm going through, I need you to prove you with me. Lord, people don't sow into the ministry like, like you tell me to ask them to. Some do. Even companies do. But Lord, there's people who say they're going to do this and do that, and they lie and don't do it. And Lord, you got to show me that you placed me over this work that you call the ministry because we want to help the less fortunate and the homeless and all of that. And you know, we even need a van to be able to take people to doctor's appointments when they go again or to take them grocery shopping or run errands for them. The van conked out. We don't have that, so we need a nice used minivan. A used one. Not $4,000 would we'll definitely buy one and register it. Lord, we just need your help. I need you to show me you're with me. And what the Lord will do is he'll send somebody to say to me, uh, hey, brother, I was watching a brother, matter of fact, last week, I think it was, I was standing on my porch, and this guy walked by, he looked at me, he had a mask on. He said, hey, how you doing, brother? I said, I'm all right, how are you? He said, man, me and my wife, we watch you on TV. I said, what? He said, yeah, we watch the TV show. Man, you be up there breaking it down. You be." I said, no, it's not me, it's the Lord. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. All that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table.
What did you say you had? Satisfied mind. When friends forsake you, satisfied mind. When my mother and my father let me down, satisfied I got to mind. What did you say? 